Okay. Some experience cast miracle, some no. Question two, Shepardiza. Uh, where were Jesus when he appointed 72? After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of them, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not written. Okay. The answer is Jesus is in Judea. Now, you know, here it is. Lake of Galilee, Dead Sea, Jerusalem is here. Jesus started uh, Caesarea Philippi and he was coming down. And then, here is Galilee, here is Samaria, this is Judea. So, in chapter 9, we skip that passage. Samaritans, they will do not Jesus. allow Jesus, so Jesus made a circle around and then entered Judea. So when he arrived in Jerusalem, he will be crucified. So Jesus is in Judea. <laughs> he passed Samaria and he's in Judea. He left the Galilee for good. He will not return. Okay, next question. Okay. How close was Jesus to his death? Very close. Right. Very close. How many weeks? I really don't know how many days or weeks because he is already in Judea. When he arrived in Jerusalem, he will die. So this is the last time he's going to go there. Right, okay. yeah, last trip. How many days left? Okay, next question. What did Jesus do even though that's his daughter? After this, the Lord appointed seven to others and sent to them, turned them ahead of him, like two in every town and place there. He himself also was about to yeah. He appointed seventy-two. Right, and sent them out. Um, you know, um, he knew he was going to die. Then, ordinarily, people spend, lose mind in worries and fear. But Jesus was working hard to expand and train disciples and expand the kingdom of God. This is amazing. So during the storm harvey, I couldn't do anything. All day long, just watch TV news. I couldn't. <laughs> My heart was just lost, you know, <clears throat> by the, all this flooding. I couldn't concentrate to uh, anything, constructive things. Human mind is so weak. One person said uh, she suddenly lost her house. She gave up her life. I said, life is more important than house. Eternal life is more important than house. But look at Jesus. He was working hard. What needs to be done? He was training 72 lay missionaries. These are not apostles. These are not uh, 12 disciples. Jesus expanding mission trip to 
ordinary followers. This is the greatness of Jesus. Before his death, he was working very hard. Okay, question three. Who are you, 72? Followers. Right. These are unknown followers, anonymous followers. They are not, you know, uh, for the disciples. So, vision three is not limited just to the apostles, but it is extended to unknown followers like us. It doesn't have to be pastor or missionary or, you know, any sincere followers. Okay, next question. To so where did Jesus send the 22? How, how will you see 22? <laughs> uh, 72. <laughs> 72. Uh, send them on ahead of him two by two into every town and place where he said was about to go to send them every town. Uh, Jesus targeting where to send it every town place where he planned to go. Not just randomly but okay I am going to visit this town, this town, this place. So he specifically assigned them to that town, that place. Ahead, ahead of them. But these are all towns in Judea. And then Jesus plan every town the disciples visited, <coughs> he planned to visit. So the, the town's people have to visit. First, this uh, unknown disciples, and after that, Jesus himself will come. Okay. Next question. What was the mission of, this, uh, of the 72? From verse 5 it says, When you enter a house, first say, Please be to this house. And one to nine. When you enter a town and are welcome, eat what is set before you, heal the sick who are there, and tell them the kingdom of God is near you. Yeah. So. The mission of the 72, give peace and give healing and give message. So not only the word of God, but practically, you know, give them power of God. The family will receive peace and walk whatever sickness they have they will be healed and then they will give a message um, some some commentary said uh, nowadays we only give a message but we don't give a peace and healing that is wrong even today, we do the same thing. We give peace and we give healing and we give message. Okay, next question. What does the kingdom God's view believe?
this message? Yeah, it's, it's the message Jesus gave the disciples to proclaim the kingdom of God is near you. So what does it mean? Um, very soon, right? Very close. And sometimes uh, Judy wake up, trying to wake up Christian. It's time to go to school. It's time to get up like that. It's very soon. So, kingdom of God is not exactly right here, but it's very close, very soon. Okay, next question. What might the people do when they heard the message from the disciples? When they heard kingdom of God is very soon, so what would they do? Right, right. They will repent. They will prepare their heart to receive the kingdom of God, to be ready to receive the kingdom of God. I don't want to miss it. Kingdom of God is very near. I want to repent. This is awake. They will awake from spiritual sleeping. So when they go out two by two, revealing, you know, God's power, God's message, then they will awake them from simple life or from spiritual sleeping. Wake them up. Okay. Next question. When does kingdom of God come? So it's not near. When the when does the kingdom of God really come? Repent and accept Jesus. Right. When Jesus comes, he said Jesus said, Go. The town's place is ahead of me. So when Jesus himself comes, when one repents and accepts Jesus, then real kingdom of God comes into their heart. So when we teach Bible, Shepherd John will start one to one Bible study. When we teach Bible, we should know. Jesus himself follows after my work. I don't give a kingdom of God. We only give near, near. But Jesus himself will come to that person. Jesus himself will give the kingdom of God. It's not when I met Jesus. It's not during Bible study. I had a Bible study, but later on, several days later on, I repented and Jesus came into my heart. So it's two steps. Sometimes, you know, Jesus directly came and people met Jesus sometimes, but in this here, two steps. Gospel worker will proclaim the message and then Jesus himself follows after our work. Okay, next question. When does a man's heart 
make them spiritually sleepy, sleepy, awake. When does a man's heart awake from spiritual sleepy? Spiritual sleeping means sleeping in sin. And when does a man's heart awake from sleeping from sins? According to this passage, when a man receives message, word of God, they wake up from spiritual sleeping. And then another way is hardships of life. Hardships of life wakes men from spiritual sleeping. You know, like a prodigal son. Life was so hard, and then he came to his senses. It's much better, a lot better, to wake up from spiritual sleeping through the message of God, through the word of God. I mean, ten times, million times better to wake up from God's words. And if that doesn't work, Hardships of life that that is very very painful difficult way of waking up from spiritual sleep. Okay, next question. What does the harvest is quite for single few parts? She just told them before they left. She just told them the harvest is plentiful. I mean, all over, all over, they are ready for harvest. So, what does significant? What does she just trying to say to them? Huh? Time is plentiful. Time is plentiful. Habit is um, plentiful uh, because harvest is abundant. Your work will bear fruit. I mean, many will reject you, but despite of rejection, their work will bear fruit. Jesus is oh, this is word of encouragement. You will bear fruit. Because so many souls are ready for harvest. Okay, next question. What problem does the kingdom of God experience? He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray, pray honestly to the Lord of the harvest to send our labors so into his harvest. Yeah, okay. God's um, kingdom faces shortage of workers, shortage of Bible teachers, shortage of evangelists, Shortage of a prayer servant. So sure. He just sees the whole world is filled with sinners who who really seeking, who really want the salvation. But there are few workers 
who can go out, give them the message. That's the situation of kingdom of God. Okay, next question. What is the solution to this problem? And he said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray honestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into his harvest. The solution is pray and send and send out labors to the harvest. Yeah. God has the key. He just said, pray earnestly to God. So God has to send more workers into this world, into the harvest field. And Jesus is training 72 lay people as harvest workers. Next question. Have you ever prayed to God asking to send more harvest workers? Yes. Amen. Usually, um, missionaries in foreign country, they are so desperate, they pray to God. And then, amazingly, cousin, one missionary went to Africa, and then he was alone. And so he prayed to God to send me a co-worker. And I don't know how long later, one guy knocked on the door. And he was the co-worker. They're going to work together. God, God, when we ask, God sends us the harvest work. When I went to uh, Toledo, I was alone, and they, I had 11 person I contacted and, uh, you know, willing to study Bible. 11 person, how can I teach them by myself? I was so overwhelmed. So I had to pray to send me the co-workers. Okay, question five. But then your speech just one day. Hold your way, behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of the wolves. You should know. Right. You are in the place of the Yeah. As they go out, even in the country of God's country, Israel, Judea, Jesus said, I'm sending you among the wolves. Wolves want to eat lambs. Christians must know how evil the world is. Must to know, you know, the teacher said, be innocent like a dog, but be wise like a serpent. We have to know what's out there in the world. How, how wicked, how deceptive, how evil the world is, we have to know. Just being innocent is not enough. There are Christians who live only within the church, who cannot go out one step outside into the world. You know why? 
so afraid to face the wicked world. But Jesus said, I'm sending you out among the wolves. So we have to know. We don't follow them, we don't fall into them, but we have to see how evil the world is. Okay, next question. We have to know the disciples when they go out two by two, they should know there is caste protection. We can go out because of caste protection is with us. I mean, you know, I when I was in New York, after work, I went to Bible study in the Queens, in the area, whole apartment buildings, you know, both sides of the street, and the whole section is abandoned. And trash was like a knee high. I couldn't believe, I mean, is this America? And then when I passed several blocks, that kind of area, there was a hospital. And then I had a Bible study with a Korean nurse over there. After Bible study around midnight, I walk back the area. And then I take a subway and then arrive home around 1 a.m. And next day I went to work. I told the American nurses, Last night I went to this area and came home. And they said to me, Are you crazy? <laughs> Do you know how dangerous it is? Promise me you will never go there again. And that area, even during day, at you know, noon, around noon during day, a woman doctor was raped in the street. And then, wow, I experienced caste protection, no harm, only like a drug addicts, you know, gangs use that area. I, I walked that area and back and forth midnight. I was there. I, I went there because I was ignorant, but caste protection, no harm came to me. Several times, I really, really went one inch to death, <laughs> but God protected me. Amazing. Okay. So, caste protection is with these evangelists, disciples. Even Storm Harvey, God protected all of our families, thank God. So, because of caste protection, we can go out into the world with the message. We can confront evil sinners. All right, question six. six what instruction did Jesus give to the disciples? A, about preparation for carry no money bags, no yeah. Set no standards and greet no one on the road. B. 
Yeah. So we studied last time in chapter nine about this one. Okay, so I will skip it. The second question A. Uh, B. No, second question uh, what A. Does, what does do not greet anyone on the road mean? Do not waste any time reading and focus on Yeah, exactly. When you greet, <laughs> uh, okay, so on the way toward the village, you meet on the, on the road your friend. So what would you do? What they should do? Don't say hello. Hello, John. Don't say that. You just walk and pretend you didn't see them. <laughs> what would, would they, should they do if they say hi and then call their name? How should they answer? Bye. <laughs> 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 You know, uh, Second Kings, Prophet Elisha gave the same instruction to his servant. And then when he sent the Sunamite um, woman, he said, do not greet anyone on the road. If anyone greet you, do not answer. Just go straight to the woman. This is the attitude on a mission. You are on a mission. When you involve the greeting, you might linger and then delay or even forget about mission. Because what if the friend in desperate situation? <laughs> when I uh, when I go to a conference. When I have to prepare either message or Bible study. I strictly follow this one. I don't, I don't, you know, go right and left. I just focus. Just one thing I do. Just focus on my mission. Preparing Bible study and thinking about how to teach each question and after Bible study is over, then I start to, hi, hi, you know, what are you doing like that? Until then, I'm so focused. And, you know, our Greek professor, Joe Une, he was the same. He was the same. Because he was coming last semester to us to teach uh, Greek. But then he was asked to deliver Sunday message. He was so frustrated. He said, I don't do two things. He said, I do only one thing. I come only to teach the Greek. So he said, he doesn't do this and that like that. He, he does only. So, wow. Here I meet another person who is like me. Anyway, so I missed a lot. When I went to a conference in Germany, after conference, there was a trip to Switzerland, first trip to Switzerland. And I, I, I didn't join. I, I didn't, you know, almost every conference, you know, have that kind of opportunity, I don't join. Because I just go with my mission. When I finish my mission, I return. Just, I do one thing, that's enough. And then one thing, do it right job. So, um, your friend may on may misunderstand you when you don't greet and smile and interact, you know, but 
teachers understand you are doing a good job. Okay, question B. In a house to receive them from verses 5 to 9, it says, When you enter a house, say, a first say, Peace to this house. If a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. If not, they will return to you. Stay in that house, eating and drinking whatever they give you. For the way a worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and you are welcome, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God is near you. Yeah. You give them peace. You heal them. You give them message. And you are served with meals. Lodging. <laughs> Meal and room. Okay, question C. Who was to serve Daniel with food? When he made the thing else, he didn't make him what they provide for the other deserves his ways, not for one of us. Question is, who served the food? The disciples or the, the people who received the message? The yeah, for people who did received message. Do you practice this? Missionary time? Uh, you know, uh, what Jesus is saying is, the disciples will give them peace, healing, God's words. And then the, those who receive that, in return, they give them food, water, and room to sleep. This is the Jesus arranged in their mission trip. Now, question is, do you practice this? You know what we do? We give them peace, healing, message, and we give food. Because sometimes it's just like, did you? <laughs> did you hear? Give your, you give them something to eat. <laughs> you give them something to eat. <laughs> and then uh, when they are hungry, destitute, and then without food, then we give them something to eat. But we give them food persistently. We give them word of God and food persistently. There's some problem. <clears throat> we give them food all the time, then we raise them as receivers, not givers. You give them food five years. Later on, they cannot be a giver. You may have to spend 10, 20 years to make them a giver because they already get used to give me God's word, give me healing, comfort, and your food. Okay, so ministry will not grow because that kind of ministry will raise a lot of receivers. When the missionary went to India, he saw Christians as a receivers. For some, you know, missionaries came, they bring money. And then, oh, we need this, we need this. Then, then they give money, take a picture, and return. And then another group of missionaries arrived. They bring money and gave money and take a picture <laughs> like that. So it's been like that centuries. And, you know, they all waiting to receive. So this missionary has problem. He challenged, he challenged, you give them. So 
they are poor, but he challenged them. You give. So even now, when we have uh, some problems, you see India brother sister send their offering. Even small amount, they always join. And then he, he challenged them. Don't receive anymore. You give them. Each chapter, they have to be financially independent. And he said, after he started this, he said he saw light in their eyes, in their heart, saw their pride restored, and then they saw light in their eyes. Deeper on spirit, giving spirit was created in them. So, it is right. This is what Jesus said the disciples. You give them peace, healing, message, and they will serve you with food, drink, and room. My, my son, uh, you know, he went to Chinese church and during summer, college student returned back to Houston during summer vacation. So my son went to the college kid meeting and it was the pastor's house. The pastor's house. Everybody, partner, everybody brought something. Pastor just provided the house. And then they brought, you know, brought their own food. And I was thinking, has it, has it been a, in our church such a thing? Maybe in my house? I will pardon you. <laughs> You don't have to bring anything. I will prepare this and that and, you know, like that. And no, they were already, when I had a one-tone Bible study, it was Chinese woman. She always fed me. I said, don't do this. But she always provided me food and drink. And then I gave her word of God. But then otherwise, others don't, others don't. So, the way what Jesus did was right. Because we, we raise, we raise receivers. Later on is big problem. My, my husband brought Always, always somebody to eat together. But this brother was consistently, almost every day, coming to eat with us. And I ran out of money. I had no money whatsoever. So that day, I served really poorly. And then, you know, he was doing like this. And then he looked at the food. He complained. He said, I should have gone to McDonald's. And then, no. Uh, <laughs> in my heart, I was thinking, hey, do you have money? Why didn't you go McDonald's? Why did you come here to eat here? And he was complaining because food was not good. And I didn't have any money. We are raising my master. My husband was raising a monster. Anyway, we continue the same thing. <laughs> okay, but well, we have to seriously think about it. When you study the um, history of evangelism in China and Korea, the instruction the missionary in China, he went China first. Number one, financial independence. Let Chinese do their own, build their own church or own with their own expenses. Don't give them money. The same principle, <clears throat> same manual brought to, to Korea when Korea first evangelism started. 
same thing. Let Koreans financially be independent. Don't give them money or things. So it was good start. But I don't know how we got into feeding people. You know, you give them something to eat, those people will starve the people, not the regular people. Okay. Uh, question D. You know, house will be selected with them. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, going through its streets and say, if the dust of your town that leads to how it will fight for against you, never please know this. That the kingdom of God has come near. Yeah. Rejected and you shook the dust off your feet. Yet you still have a message. <laughs> you have to give that message. Yeah. Uh, okay. Question E. Oh, yeah. Whom does the message of the disciples represent? Sixteen. The one who hears you hears me, and the one who rejects you rejects me, and. The one who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. Uh, the person who rejects the message. So the disciples' message represent Jesus and God. This doesn't mean we have the power of God or power like God. This doesn't mean God's power was transferred to us. It doesn't mean. It means Jesus protects his gospel against contempt, against those who despise the message, you know. Okay, so when they reject the messenger, Actually, they are rejecting Jesus. They are rejecting their God. So, we have to, we have to, with a firm attitude, with the God's authority, we have to proclaim the kingdom of God is near you near you you have to be right with god we need to repent question seven jesus left galilee what was jesus sign of the youth for the towns in galilee can you read um verse 13 13 and 14. 13 and 14. What do you uh, call them? What do you message for your miracles that were performed in you have been performed in Tyre and Sidon? They would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it would be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than, you, than for you. And 15. Okay. And you, Capernaum, will you be lifted up to the ground, Jesus Christ, uh, you will be thrown down to the depths. Yeah. Now Jesus left Galilee completely. He is in Judea. He's looking back. He's ministering in Galilee. And Jesus' heart is broken because of them. These are towns in Galilee. And Jesus spent most of time in these towns. We don't know where the Chorazin is, but Jesus spent Bethsaida. Jesus fed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. Capernaum, 
lot of uh, ministry was in the Capernaum, almost like a hometown, second hometown. But Jesus' heart is really aching, broken. As he looked back, he's ministering Galilee. Woe to you, Corazon. Woe to you, Bethsaida. Woe to you, Capernaum. Jesus re rebuked them. It will be, <laughs> you know, 15 years of ministry in Ohio, that's my heart. Did I spend 15 years for you? Really disappointing. Really, really hurting, disappointing, you know. That's what Jesus heart was broken thinking about how much miracles how hard he preached gave them the word of God and they were very stubborn little responses from them okay question A mm, the day of judgment which place will be more bearable. Sidon. Highway. Okay. Between the two towns, that's what Jesus compared. The town which rejected the disciples or Sodom, which will be less punished or which city will be more bearable. Sodom or the town? Sodom. Yeah. Sodom will be more bearable. So that means the town that rejected the disciples will be severely punished, more punishable <laughs> than Sodom. Sodom was burned by Surf of fire from heaven, right? And the town that rejected Jesus' disciples will be more punished than Sodom. Okay, next question between Corazon and Bethsaida. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these uh, Galilee towns, Corazon, Bethsaida, will be more severely punished than Tyre and Sidon. More severely punished. Wow. Capernaum, Jesus didn't compare. But also, we will be dreadful. They receive a punishment. Question A. A. <clears throat> what were the sins of Sodom, Tyre, and Sidon? Mm -hmm. What's their sins? Sodom. They, they rejected it. They, Sodom, especially. They, too much sin, too much sin. Yeah. And there's sin too. So Jesus is comparing, comparing these Galilee towns and then Gentile towns. These are all Gentile towns. Jesus didn't evangelize this area. So these people sinned without God's word. They sinned without seeing miracles of Jesus. They sinned because they didn't hear. 
they didn't see. Jesus said, had the miracles been done in them, they would have repented in sackcloth, ashes. So they would re repent quicker, faster, more, you know, sensitive to these messages and miracles. But they didn't have a chance to hear God's words and see miracles. But Jesus didn't do ministry among them. Jesus' ministry was, it's, you know, among the towns in Galilee. Corazon, Bethsaida, Capernaum. So question B. Okay, what was the sin of the, uh, these towns? Curzon, Bethsaida, and Capernaum. Um, says it, if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Kyrie and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. So these Galilee towns, they heard the word of God. They saw the miracles of Jesus, but they did not respond because their heart was hardened, stubborn, and they were sleeping spiritually. So, the Gentile sinners, they didn't repent because they didn't know. Galilee, towns, people, they knew, they saw, they heard, and they didn't repent. That's the difference. Even the, you know, same sinners, but one group is Gentile sinners, they didn't know, so they didn't repent. The Galilee towns sinners, they knew and they didn't repent. So they are punished more severely. Yes. Just like in our times, people say, love, love, grace, grace, and don't repent. That will be more severely punished than non-believers. Okay. Question C. What's the purpose of miracles and messages of Jesus? For receiving Jesus' message and believers? Repent. 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 Purpose of miracles. Purpose of Jesus' words is Jesus revealing who Jesus is. Then we need kneel down before Jesus, repent, turn around completely from simple life. Then the people in the towns in Galilee, instead of repentance, Give us more miracle. Oh, that's good, exciting. Give me more miracle. We want more miracle. Want me more miracle. Yes. Want more miracle, more miracle, more words, more the words without repentance. Piling up. Cause judgment. Severe judgment. Just like townspeople in Galilee. Okay. I will study this up to here.